Hey YouTube, what is going on? It's Huncho here, back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be focusing on fixing FPS drops. I have a folder to download. There's nothing crazy in it. Just an application, the HW monitor, as well as some reg priorities for Win32 and a services file. First off in this video, I want to talk about Win32 priority. This is something that other tweakers have been telling people to place on a certain value because it's the best for everyone, where that is not true. Some values might be better for the majority of people, but unless you test for your actual computer, you're not gonna know. So there's two ways that I like to test these because you don't need to restart your computer to switch in between them. The first way is if you're going for FPS, it's just strictly benchmarking, whether you're using a program like heaven or you're doing it in fortnite where you're using cat frame x to record your fps while you're standing in the same spot in the same map over a long period of time now the win 32 priority isn't going to give you massive fps gains but you might gain 15 20 fps going from one to another however i noticed a big difference when i'm switching between them in not only the quality of the video on the screen but also input delay so the way that i test it is by standing over a cone in Fortnite and editing the cone over and over again. If you can press at a consistent speed all the time, you'll notice when your system is lagging behind because the edit won't go through. Another way is free building. When you're free building, try to focus on not so much like crosshair placement, but just kind of like looking what your builds look like, especially opening up edits. I'll notice that certain priorities look way sharper than others. But again, here's a bunch of values to test, as well as these. But I took the folder from the Fox OS, just because it was well organized. And there's also a picture explanation of what these are, as well as a link to a detailed explanation of it, if you want to read about it. Next, I want to talk about the services. I took this folder from the revision post install. Basically, what you're going to do is run this top link to back up your services. So it's gonna show it like this. You're gonna save this to your desktop as backup services or something along those lines. Then you're gonna change it to a reg file. By just changing it to .reg. So it looks like the same thing, except it'll be able to run in registry. So now what we're gonna do is run nsudo Check enable all privileges, browse, find that folder, services, and click the bare services reg. So to give you an idea, I have 67 services running. And now I'm gonna run the bare services and restart my computer. So now I've restarted my computer and I only have 34 services running. And now if you wanna go back, because something isn't working properly, you're just gonna go back into the folder, services, and sudo, enable the privileges, browse, and then go to where you created your backup services. So I saved it to my desktop, open, run. And now I'm gonna restart my computer again. So now that I've loaded back up and I'm back in Task Manager, you can see how many services I have running again. First off, I want to talk about how much your CPU and your motherboard will affect your gaming experience. On a laptop, you're mostly going to see higher CPU temperatures, but on a PC, I try to aim for below 60 degrees. There's a few things I want to talk about in particular. So one thing people do not check is CPU temperatures. And one of the main culprits is either misplaced or bad thermal paste on their CPU. Not every thermal paste is created equally and some are significantly better than others. But for the most part, if you buy a thermal paste outside of whatever came on your cooling unit, it's gonna be sufficient for your CPU. However, if you still have whatever stock thermal paste came on there, it's most likely not gonna be something that's high quality. And over time, 
you're gonna see your CPU temperatures rise up and depending how long you've had your PC, you might already be at that point. Obviously water cooling your CPU is gonna be better, but obviously those cost money. So I'm not gonna get into those. But if you are building a PC, definitely go with water cooling over just a single fan. And now I know most of us are culprits of this. I'm sure the inside of your PC, maybe not this bad, but it's gonna look like this. You'll be surprised on how fast your PC collects dust. And it's one of the main culprits for high CPU temperatures, as well as GPU temperatures. All you have to do is open up your PC and buy some compressed air. You can find it at most stores, Walmart, Target, and just spray off your fans. But make sure you keep a good enough distance away so you're not getting the actual fluid on there and it's spraying the air. One way to avoid dust on your PC and to keep your temperatures down is keeping your PC off the carpet. If you're living at home with your parents, most likely they're gonna have some type of wood around the house, whether it's a piece of plywood or like a wood pallet, something along those lines. You don't have to buy an actual PC holder here. For example, in my room, I didn't want my PC on the desk, but I only have carpet. So I just bought a piece of plywood from Home Depot. And it's gonna keep that PC off the floor and get better circulation, as well as not picking up all the dust that falls into the carpet. Next, I wanna talk about setting up your PC. When you're plugging in your computer, you wanna make sure the outlet you're plugged into is grounded. If you're not sure whether it's grounded, just plug it into a power strip, also called a surge protector. Make sure you're connecting any device for your computer directly to this, and do not plug in anything else to the power strip, such as phone chargers, lights, other things that you're gonna be using around your desk. Just keep your PC plugged into that power strip. If you have more than one RAM stick, for the majority of motherboards, you want it in separate slots, such as one and three or two and four. In your manual, it'll tell you on your motherboard which ones it recommends to put it in. It might even show it with little stars on your motherboard. But this has a big impact on performance. Another important topic is your monitor cord. You want to make sure you're plugging that into your GPU and not your motherboard up here. And when you're plugging it into your GPU, if you have multiple ports for DisplayPort or HDMI, make sure to try all of them because you might have better performance on one compared to another. While we're on the topic of monitors, I want to talk about frame timing. This is something that will create a much smoother gaming environment. You want to make sure you're capping your FPS to an integer or a whole number value, not decimals, of the refresh rate of your monitor. For example, if you have a 144 hertz monitor, you're going to do like 144 divided by 2 or 144 times 3. If you have a 240, you're going to do something like multiplying by 2 to get 480 or dividing by 2, 3, 4, 5, which would get you 120, 80, and 60. If you can't hold the refresh rate of your monitor for the majority of the time, at least around 80% of your gameplay, that's going to create a lot of stutters and you're going to notice that your gameplay is not smooth. That's where dividing your refresh rate comes into play. If you don't want to play at say 72 hertz because you're dividing that by two, then you need to reduce your graphics quality or if you're playing Fortnite, play on performance mode because that's going to create that smoother environment. For the majority of people when they say, wow, performance mode is so much smoother, it's because their game wasn't smooth because they weren't holding that 240 FPS in game before when they were on DX11. And now on performance mode, the majority of the time they're sitting at 240, which creates that smooth gameplay experience. Next, I want to talk about multi-booting. So that means you're going to have more than one Windows on your PC. So when I'm in File Manager and I'm looking at my PC, you'll see I have a Windows 7 and a Windows 2009. I showed this in a previous video of showing how to get Windows 7, but you're going to be going to Disk Management, right-clicking on your partition that you want to split, shrink volume and then whatever number you type in here is going to be the amount of megabytes 
that your new windows will create on. The reason we want to dual boot windows is because you can have one windows where you can do anything on and it's not going to matter. You can download a bunch of programs, you can test things, you can not worry about messing up your gaming environment. And on your other windows, you can have it strictly for the games you play, completely optimized. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to worry about downloading links from the internet. Everything you do is going to be isolated for gaming and then isolated for bloatware. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit that like button. Your support means a lot to me. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.